Hi guys, today's May 14th. I haven't been on in a few weeks. Been going through a lot of stuff. Um, I have stuff encouraging I want to tell you, so I'm going to go through this quickly. Father God, I lift this video up to you that it goes near and far, Father God, that people will open their eyes, mind, heart, and soul to you, Father God. Be the ears that they hear out of, the mouthpiece they speak out of. Be the blood that runs in their veins, Father God. And I ask and pray, Father God, that you anoint this message by your Holy Spirit, that this is not my own understanding, that your will be done, not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so just a little bit ago, literally, I don't know if you guys know who Misha is. I've talked a thousand times about it. He lives over in Israel. He's as close to God as you can get. Um, and he lives in Israel. And uh, it says, breaking, this is by the Israeli Defense Forces. Three rockets were just fired from Syria towards Israel. Okay, one of which fell in Syria. Now, why this is a big game changer. This means that we are headed into the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, today is May 14th, right? And 73 years ago, May 14th, 1948, at midnight, there was, a, you know, the same thing happened um, um, with, with Syria. So God told us the timeline. He told us the season of things that which are to come, and they're going to come to pass. This, all the nations have now um, came and, is coming against Israel. Okay. People say God's going to spare them. Yes, but he's not going to spare them right the second. Okay. Because of the prophecies that have to take place. This, these wars that's happening right now, I believe is going to be a complete total of 10 days. Um, because God says that some of you will have tribulation 10 days. And I understand that's talking about other verses in the Bible about, you know, during the, the wrath of God or the, great tribulation period but that's just what got brought up to my mind that part okay um so all of this um boiled down with the war and everything um this is going to bring about the peace peace treaty okay and macron even said right here i gotta find papers because i got all different kinds of things that i need to say okay see France calls for relaunch of negotiations for peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Okay. French President Emmanuel Macron is concerned by the escalation of violence between Israelis and Palestinians and calls for a definite reset of negotiations between the two sides, the French presidency said on Thursday. Palestinian militants fired more rockets into Israel's commercial heartland on Thursday as Israel kept up a punishing bombing campaign in Gaza and mass tanks and troops on the enclaved border. There has been 11 people dead from the Syria bombing, okay? And they even said, um, General Petraeus Pans, Biden's Afghanistan pullout, says Taliban will retake country and U.S. will regret it. Wow, we're all going to be in, like, big world chaos, World War Three. On Wednesday, retired uh, U.S. Army General David Petraeus said that he is concerned that President Joe Biden's decision to withdraw all U.S. troops from Afghanistan by September 11th would allow the Taliban to take control of the country, which it would. In Wednesday's interview, uh, he said, I fear that we are going to look back and regret this decision. What could happen now and what seems to be beginning to be happening is the Taliban further taking control of different territory, some crumbling of the Afghan security forces as we're uh, drawing down our presence. Okay, so America, you know, being, as many call it, the um, daughter of Babylon, you know, in order for us, in order for God to, you know, do what he's got to do, America's got to be stripped of all of her riches and her glory. Okay, so... That's a big thing. And then Netanyahu Gaza operation. It, this is far from over and this just came out. We will do all it takes to restore security to our city, cities and out citizens, which uh, Israelis military operation aimed to curb uh, Gazan terror, terror groups raining down missiles upon Israel is far from over. Prime Minister Netanyahu said on Friday, pledging to do all that it takes to restore security to our cities and to our citizens. Hamas and other Islamic militants based 
um, in the Gaza Strip fired some 2,000 rockets at Israel since the start of the latest escalation earlier this week. Okay, and the terrorist leaders believe they can flee our military might. Well, they can't. We are reaching them wherever they are, and we will continue to do so. So there is no Middle East peace right now. But Macron obviously thinks he's going to step up and make a brand new peace treaty, as many think that he could be the Antichrist because he looks so much like Nikolai Carpathia off of uh, the Left Behind series and the shape-shifting of the eyes and everything, okay? Now, I'm going to read uh, some scriptures before I get into all this other stuff. Um, so it says, uh, first Thessalonians five, uh, but concerning the times and seasons, brethren, he's talking to us, you have no need that I should write to you, which we already know what's coming. We've already been warning, right? So it says for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Okay. Uh, now he, you, I just said that many are saying, well, no one knows the day or hour. Well, I'm listening. If you listen, this, he specifically said, no need. He's writing to us. He's writing to all the others that don't have that understanding. See, uh, for when they say peace and safety, which is exactly what's getting ready to happen. Then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. This is the thing we have now all these years since 2017, 2015, been watching with the super blood moon tetrad, the, um, uh, Jubilee year, and all this other stuff that's happening, we have been watching and waiting, okay? And it has been a long birthing process because when you have contractions, you're like, oh, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And you become impatient, just like Habakkuk 2, 3, where it says the vision is yet for an appointed time, though it tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely come and it will not lie. Okay, and that's the same thing. It is coming. We are no longer, we are at a 10. The baby is getting ready to be pushed out. We are literally in travail now. We are, we have crossed over that point. We are no longer in the contraction point. The baby is getting ready to be born. We are getting ready to be caught up. Jesus is about to return through them skies. God told us the, the timing. He told us the season. He told us what signs to look for. The 18th. Okay. Uh, many have said, oh, that could be the rapture date. Uh, there's a gentleman that I ran into. He, um, um, it, 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 anyways, long story made short, him and I got, got talking at the store and he's a pastor and, um, he believes the 18th is when they get led back into captivity or led from captivity. And being that, um, you know, uh, a week later, we now have the flower moon, right? So that's the, this blood moon, um, that's coming. And God said at the timing of his coming, Matthew 24 and, and all those other scriptures talking about the moon shall not give its light and things like that it, or whatever. And it turns red and many people have had dreams of that. Okay. Um, and that also being around the 26th is the last day of school for, uh, kids in our area. Now, um, what, what the big thing is with that, I, I had a dream about the blood moon and the children and the rapture. And then, um, I had a dream a couple years ago, which I think is crazy because tomorrow is my little brother's birthday and he's turning 14. Today is the 14th. I dreamt of Leo the lion up in the constellations and on his right back leg, there was the number 14 and it was circled plain as day. Now that's the only part of the dream that I dreamt. Okay. I know something major. Jesus Christ is literally about to bust through them skies and the woman is getting ready to flee into the wilderness. But as many have said, well, that can't happen until the middle of the tribulation and the tribulation hasn't begun. I can't tell you enough. There's 1335 days from start to finish of the tribulation of, um, all of that from start to finish. Okay, and you have the three and a half years of the beginning of sorrows, which is now we are literally getting ready to cross over into the timing of Jacob's trouble. This wars that's happening, uh, you can read in Luke 21, Matthew 24, um, and I'm actually going to be reading these scriptures. So I'm going along pretty quick, trying not to confuse anybody. Um, and uh, then he said, and this is in Luke 21. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilence, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, 
before all those things. They will lay hands on you and persecute you, delivering up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. That's already been happening around the world. Uh, people dying for their faith, a bunch of martyrs, okay? And even in America, there's been uh, pastors and stuff that have been jailed, you know, for preaching the gospel and things like that. Okay, but it will turn out for you as an occasion for a testimony. Therefore, set out in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Okay, so then it says right here. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. I'm going through that right now. And they will put some of you to death. Okay, which I believe with the, the jab and this other, um, you know, stuff that's out, uh, that's the part of it that they're talking about. Um, because And then you've got the people, uh, the, you've got people who are tattling on each other, okay? And then it says, and you will be hated for all my names, by all for my name's sake. And we are hated, very much so. But not a hair of your head shall be lost by your patience possesses your soul. Okay. So we have patience here. Here we go. Remember how I was saying, you got to be patient through the labor pains. Well, here we go in revelations. Um, uh, or yeah, revelations chapter three, verses 10, because you have kept my command to persevere, which means to wait, I also will keep you from the hour, okay, which means season, okay, of the trial of the adversaries of the evil, which shall come upon the whole world, which is the ruling of the Antichrist, to test those who dwell on the earth. Okay, then it starts going into the tribulation, because after chapter 3, you're not going to hear about the churches at all in the Bible. Um, all right, so... In Revelations 12, uh, like we said, over in Israel, they have their false Messiah, right? And they're believing this lie that, oh, he he's the Messiah, we crowned him, blah, blah, blah. But we know Jesus comes in the sky. Now, what's going to happen is there's going to be one world leader, which apparently even uh, Pope Francis in 2019 uh, said that he is world leader. So we shall, well, I'm not going to see because we are literally uh, about out of here. Now, when the Antichrist has already been here. Okay, now I have to read you this. Sorry, in Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. Okay, where do we gather? We gather up in the air. Okay, let no one deceive you by any means. Okay, and there's a semicolon. That's the first command that he tells us. Okay, and many are being deceived. That day, okay, him busting through them skies will not happen unless there comes a falling away first. Those falling away from faith. And the man of sin has revealed the son of perdition. We've already seen that over in Israel. Now, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. But... That is that mass deception. Okay, so here we go. Do you remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, what is holding back. That he, he okay, which is the Antichrist, may be revealed in his own time. Now, um, what the guy um, was saying, which makes Absolute perfect sense is exactly the same thing. We are, you got the dragon whom gives power to the beast. You have God in heaven who gives his orders to Jesus, whom therefore, because we accept him, have the Holy Spirit inside us. So therefore we have the evil that abounds. If you're not of Christ living inside you and you have a ruler over that on this earth, right? Who's doing the commands of who? Satan. You see what I'm saying? Because Satan can't come down, so therefore he comes down in man form, deceiving the world. So, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Yep, it's already been abound by a spirit. You understand? Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Okay, the restrainer we know means the Holy Spirit, the church. 
Okay, because it is us, the Holy Spirit lives inside us. There obviously has to be some other type uh, during the great, great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble to be able to come to Christ. Okay, so therefore from this timing and it says, and then, then the lawless one will be revealed. Okay, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according, listen to this, to the working of, of Satan. Do you see what I'm saying? So exactly what I said, you got God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. You got the dragon who gives power to the beast who then you also got the lawless one or whatever. So you got the three that's working together in an entity and you got because Satan mimics God. You see what I'm saying? If I lost you, I'm sorry. I'll try and explain it better. But I'm telling you guys that my whole point to all of this, okay? Um we're going to go back to Luke 21. Okay, right here. I want to read this to you. Okay, and I've already read this. Uh, but not a hair of our head will be lost and by our patience possesses our soul. Okay, so we've been waiting. So now we've got the first three and a half years, which has already occurred. Okay, that's the contractions. Now, as the baby gets ready to be born in Revelation 12, what happens? He stands right before the woman seeking to devour that child. But whoop, we're caught up and the woman what? flees so he gets angry god sends a big earthquake swallows them up by a great flood and those get led out of captivity those are the ones that protected but okay those are the ones that would be protected the rest whom will have to endure those are the ones that this is what it's speaking of but when you see jerusalem surrounded by armies which we are seeing now then know that its desolation is near then let those who are in judea flee to the mountains let those who are in the midst of her depart and let not one of of those who are in the country enter her you understand for these are the days of vengeance and all things which are written may be fulfilled. This is the timing of Jacob's trouble, the beginning of it. No if, ands, or buts. This is not my understanding. This is in red. This is in Jesus's word. Okay. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days. For there will be a great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Okay, and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And then it just keeps talking about right here. Um, and then there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. Okay, we've already seen that. The signs in the sun. Okay, hello, the planet. There's two suns uh, in the moon, blood moons, um, and we've seen stars. We've seen the alignment of the Revelation 12 woman. We've seen the moon under her feet, da 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 We've already seen the first half of the fulfillment of that. We're waiting now for the baby to be born because the Antichrist is then going to try, but he gets so angry, he can't reach her or the baby, okay? So can't reach the church and can't reach those God is protecting for the 42 months so or 1260 days. So he turns around. And with him being leader of the world, he makes war with everybody to make him worship him. This is the part we are at. This part. Because it says men's hearts failing them from the fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things, all these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption draweth nigh. And this is when he's talking about the fig tree generation. That is us. Time is up. I cannot tell you enough. Okay. And I, I got to get all this off my chest. I got to, I've been waiting. Mark 13 even talks about this. Uh, for on, tell us when these things will be happened and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled. And Jesus answering them began to say, take, take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name saying, I am he and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled. For such things must happen, but the end is not yet. 
for nation against nation, okay? We've already got the race against race, kingdom against kingdom. We've got um, country against country. We've got the surrounding over at Israel and all the nations coming against the apple of God's eyes. These are the beginning of sorrows. Boop. And then there's going to be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in many places. But watch out. Okay, they're going to enter you um, into synagogues. And the gospel must be preached to all the nations. They will arrest you. Um... Um, brother against brother, parents against parents, you keep on going and you will be hated for all my name's sake, but he who, who endures till the end shall be saved. Okay. So, so when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet standing where it ought not let the reader then understand, then let those who were in Judea flee to the mountains. Now this many people don't understand that this part with the revelation 12 sign, the woman, okay gives birth to the baby and it's not immediately the same day boop she turns around and flees and then boop the antichrist there this is going to be a progress the baby flees out of the way you have the woman still standing there but god takes her away you see but in all that meantime jerusalem desolate and even Jesus said at the beginning of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, not one stone will be left on one another. Not one. Okay. Um, so, so then therefore when they flee, that's the timing of that Jacob's trouble. You understand what I'm saying? We are there. The, the birthing of the baby is here. We are no longer in these like birth pain, birth pain, birth pain. You know what I mean? Because it's been happening full speed. We are now in travail. We are out of 10. We're getting ready to be pushed out. We are legit there with, with, you know, it, it was different when you have the wars over in Russia and Ukraine and Turkey and all them. But now it's not just that we as America turned our back against Israel. How did we do that? Why don't we intervene? Well, because Biden gave billions of dollars to the Palestinians for their weapons. And he wanted it up to 70% uranium. Okay? That's because of it. He's finishing the working that Obama did from the beginning. Because he's democratic and he's not of God. Okay, so... Um, uh, we keep going, we keep going, and it's talking about right here, now we have Matthew 24, uh, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, whoever leads, then let those who are in Judea flee, let him who is on the mountaintop no, not go back, and da 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 da, and we keep going down, and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, okay, because I'm going to read you, for then, for then, okay, when all this stuff comes to pass, there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. So that whole entire time until that very day, nothing, okay, all these things won't even compare to what's going to happen next, which is the great tribulation. And unless those days were shortened, what shortens the tribulation days? No flesh would be saved. Okay, and that's got a semicolon. So there's two parts to this meaning. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. That's us. We won't have to go through that. You understand? So he has to cut it short because no one would survive. But he takes us out of the way from the all this crap that's about to go down, the timing of Jacob's trouble. You understand? So you you keep going down and it's talking about obviously you guys have read Matthew 24 go down to 29 with me and it says immediately after the tribulation of those days of all these things right here immediately okay after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heavens will be shaken remember i just read that to you in luke 21 Mark 13 and in Revelation 12, all that coincides together because all of them say the same thing. Then, which means after that, the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 
Okay, this is Jesus. There's a difference between the rapture and the second coming. Understand that. The rapture, he's on the clouds where everyone's going to see him. The tribes of Israel, they're going to realize, crap, we pierced the son of God. He really is who he says he is. And we have been deceived. So therefore, when he comes back, he's going to send his four angels or his angels at the four winds to collect us. Whoop, the church. And then we meet him in the clouds. To be protected for that, for that uh, timing of Satan. And then we come back at the end with Jesus when he steps his feet on the Mount of Olives. That is the second coming. Okay, so this is the second scripture that says, learn this parable of the fig tree. We are there, the fig tree generation. Now, done speaking of that. Zechariah 12, the burden of the Lord, uh, the burden of the word of the Lord against Israel says... Um, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. And all who would heave it away will surely be cut into pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. That is where we are at. These all coincide together. One more scripture. Okay. Um, listen to this. Daniel 9, 24 on. We've read this a million times, but I want you to listen and, and, and understand. Know therefore, this is 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks, which is 69 years and 70 years. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times. You know, we already see because they're going to be laid desolate and they have to rebuild it because that's where they're putting what? The Antichrist is going to come and be the world leader. So therefore, this war that's happening is going to make it desolate at the timing. Boop, we're leaving. So the Antichrist comes and makes world peace. You see what I'm saying? Okay, and after the 60, 62 weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay, the end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Do you understand? This war, this is what it's talking about, is going to lay it flat this then is when he comes, he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And many think this means seven years. Okay. A week is a season. Okay. What's the season? The timing of Jacob's trouble from the timing that the antichrist comes. Okay. He only gets 42 months. It doesn't say, oh, he gets seven years. No, it says he gets 42 months. And then from the 1290th day to the 1,335 days, that's all wrath of God. You understand? That's the rest of the scriptures. So everybody keeps twisting God's words around. You literally, literally have to study each and every scripture to put this piece together. Now I'm going to say one last thing. Ezekiel 17. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Say now to the rebellious house, do you not know what these things mean? Tell them indeed the king of Babylon went to Jerusalem and took its king and princes and led them with him to Babylon. And he took the king's offspring, made a covenant with him and put him under oath. He also took away the mighty of the land. Okay. And this is when it's talking about both of the kings in, in Revelation 13, both. Was it Revelation 13? I'm sorry. It might be in Daniel. Daniel 12. Is that right? Yes. No, Daniel 11. And at the end of some years, they should join forces for the daughter of the king. This is us. Hello. Or whatever. Of the south shall go to the king of the north to make an agreement, but shall not retain it by her own power. And neither he or his authority shall stand, but she shall be given up with those who brought her and who begot her and with him strengthen her in those times. Okay. We know that you keep going down. It's talking about both of the kings. 
hearts are going to be bent on evil. They, they're going to make this covenant and it's going to be the peace. This is the complete 100% last piece to the puzzle for the Antichrist to gain his power. We are here, folks. Jesus is about to return. We are out of time. Okay. May 15th over in Israel time. Is that timing when Israel became a nation? Okay. And when the wars and all this stuff took place, I just want to cry because I have the Holy Spirit all over me. And I don't know, honestly, like, like I said last time, I don't know how much more we can speak. Everybody's heard it. I've had several dreams, but what's the point in presenting them? We're here guys. If you guys haven't heard us now, I don't think you're going to. Um, and, uh, with, with the jab being mandatory, that's another thing that they have talked about. They said once Pfizer, uh, once the FDA approves it, it's going to be mandatory. And they're talking about it uh, being man by the fall time. So if that doesn't tell you that the Antichrist gains his power this year, I don't know what does. So uh, we're, we're here, folks. God bless. Pray over this as always. Study, study, study to find yourself approved. Do not take my word for it. Study God's word. Pray over this as always. God bless.